Kilmarnock, long, long ago. A place of indeterminate origins that probably grew to support the nearby castle by Kilmarnock Water. A place that came to be known the world over for the manufacture of its caps or bonnets. Kilmarnock Bonnets. By the 18th century, Kilmarnock was a sizeable town with a street layout that exists today. But it was probably the arrival of the railway in the early 19th century that allowed the town to really grow and prosper. Hello there. This is called Marnock Railway Station. I got the 804 train from Glasgow Central to here. The main notice board in Glasgow Central said something about four carriages, the train splitting at Kilmarnock, Stranraer and so on and so forth. It announced that the train was on the platform probably about 10 minutes before it was due and everybody headed for the platform. Uh, the, the train was just sitting there, it wasn't open. Um, and the train was only two carriages. So right away you're thinking, is this the right train? Is it, how's it going to split into two lots of two if it's just two carriages? The destination thing on the train said Malig. And again, you're thinking, well, is this the right train? Have they made a mistake? And everybody's standing on the platform oozing uncertainty and impatience because they couldn't get on the train. The driver and the guard turned up literally about two or three minutes before the train was due to leave. And I, I, I said to the, well, it wasn't the guard, it was the ticket inspector. I said to the ticket inspector, it's not the Mali train then. He said, no, we can only adjust it when we get here. And I'm thinking to myself, well, could you not get here like a bit earlier so that you can adjust? adjust the train's destination so that passengers know exactly what's going on and so that you can switch the heating on and passengers aren't going on to a cold train. You know, I, I thought for many years that there's something badly lacking with ScotRail. There's a certain endemic attitude that is wrong. There's a certain kind of um, attitude towards the public. You know, it's that kind of just let them stand on the platform and fret for a while. We'll have another sip of tea and we'll get there just a minute or two before the train leaves. We, go, we don't give a monkeys. And it's a wrong attitude. As members of the public and travellers, we've come to accept this is normal. We have come to accept this is how it is. And it shouldn't be how it is. This is a service that is in places below par. It's a sort of service where when you go on a train and you find the toilet working, you're surprised. Because on far too many occasions the toilet isn't working. And you're thinking, what an utter shambles. If ScotRail is now under the ownership of the Scottish Government, I think it's time we started kicking a few backsides. I, for one, am, I'm not prepared to accept a, a service that's below par. Uh, none of us should. It's always good to start off any adventure with a bit of a moan. 
Um, as I say, I'm in Kilmarnock, and this is Kilmarnock Railway Station. In this video, I will have a brief look at Kilmarnock, but the sole focus here is going to be about the, the destruction of much of Kilmarnock town centre uh, around the area of the cross in the 1970s in order to build the Burns shopping mall. Many towns in the 1970s knocked bits of their town down and built shopping malls. Um, Greenock springs to mind as a particularly good or bad example. They destroyed uh, a little bit of the town, built a shopping centre which has cleaved the town in two. But uh, I think Kilmarnock's uh, example is probably the worst I have seen uh, as far as the, the size of the area that was destroyed and um, you know as, as is often the case the shopping centre like many of these 1970s malls is now a concrete monstrosity it's an eyesore that is falling apart at the seams and the galling thing is that in building the Burns shopping mall they actually destroyed the one main link that the town had with Robert Burns. Welcome to what is left of Kilmarnock. Kilmarnock Railway Station. The first thing most visitors to Kilmarnock will probably see. The first purpose-built railway line in Scotland was actually here. It opened in 1811 and was used to transport coal from pits in Kilmarnock to the harbour at Troon. Earlier wagonways existed to transport coal in other areas of Scotland, and I suppose it all depends how you define the word railway. The wagonway in Alloa, for example, was in operation from the 1760s and like most of these wagonways, was really the forerunner of our railways. When paying passengers were first carried on this line in the 1840s, most would probably have taken the train from Kilmarnock to Troon to enjoy a spell at the seaside. Very few residents of Troon would have taken a break in Kilmarnock. Kilmarnock was a place of industrial renown. Coal pits, carpet factories, shoe factories, engineering works making trains, mills in every shape and form, and factories making the famous Kilmarnock bonnet. It must have been a smoky, grimy place compared to Troon. There were also print works, and this is where Robert Burns was first published. John Wilson had his printing business in Star and Close, just off Waterloo Street, seen here. In a town plan dating to 1857, just 71 years after publication of Burns' Kilmarnock edition, you can see the Star Hotel presumably at once the Star Inn, and a close leading to it from Waterloo Street. But it is perhaps because of all this industry and the resultant smoke and noise along with the attraction of a jaunt on a train to the seaside at Troon, that folk were more keen to leave Kilmarnock than to visit it. In my Blue Guide to Scotland, dating to 1949, Kilmarnock is described as a manufacturing town of importance, with few attractions for the tourist beyond its association with Robert Burns. It was perhaps with a desire to make Kilmarnock more appealing to locals and visitors alike 
along with the need to bring the town kicking and screaming into the modern age. That in the 1970s, those high Hedians in the town council decided to demolish much of the town centre and build in its place the Burns Shopping Mall. Never has a decision been more wrong. You can get a good idea of how the old cross in Kilmarnock used to look through the examination of old photographs, town plans and maps. This 1857 town plan shows the street layout and the many inns and public houses in the area around the cross. You can see the Black Bull Hotel, the Portland Arms Hotel, the Victoria Tavern, the Star Hotel and Rainbow Hotel. All those buildings that you can see with a PH are public houses. You can also see the location of the gallows where wrongdoers were hanged. In this Ordnance Survey map dating to 1856, you can see streets emanating from the area around the cross. Cheapside leading to the Low Church. Portland Street on the north, Bour Street, Regent Street, Waterloo Street and King Street on the south of the cross. A new street was later created between Regent Street and Waterloo Street, but in the 1970s Duke Street, as it was known, along with much of the area around the cross, was demolished. And if we superimpose a number of images, you can perhaps see just how much of Kilmarnock's stone-built heritage was swept away to make way for the new all-singing, all-dancing Burns Shopping Mall. of firms who once built trains in Kilmarnock have dwindled over the years, but while a shadow of its former self, that particular industry still thankfully exists. Unfortunately, that's probably an exception. Like way too many Scottish towns, there is nowhere near the level of industry and number of jobs in Kilmarnock that there once were. One by one, all the industries that once made Kilmarnock great have closed down. Carpet factories closed, mills fell into a state of dereliction, and they don't even make the famous Kilmarnock bonnet anymore. Probably made in China. But when Diageo pulled the plug on the Johnny Walker whiskey bottling plant in 2012, putting upwards of 700 folk out of work, it was like the final nail in the coffin of this once proud town. The Burns shopping mall has not stood the test of time. Burns would have been horrified to find his name associated with such a concrete monstrosity. Its internal avenues have a feel of dereliction and abandonment, 
just half a century after being constructed. It's a sad place where visitors weave their way around plastic buckets placed to catch drips from a leaky ceiling. It's probably the biggest architectural shame I have ever seen. When visiting Kilmarnock for this video, I plan to visit Kay Park and the wonderful fountain, seen here in 1857, but I couldn't find it. Turns out the fountain and bandstand were removed during the Second World War, presumably for melting down and to be used for the war effort. How could they destroy what is clearly a work of art? Other fountains, for example in Paisley's Fountain Gardens and Alexandra Park in Glasgow, have survived. And to top it all off, the Burns Monument in the photo was partially demolished in 2004 after being deliberately set on fire by vandals. These days, it looks as if Burns is peering over the top of a high security wall. But, as I've said before, it's always nice wandering the streets of a town you've never visited, or haven't visited for a while. So let us wander the streets of Kilmarnock, today and in better times.
Well, that was called Marnock, or what is left of it. I don't want to put anyone off visiting Kilmarnock, in fact the exact opposite, because like any town in Scotland, it's worth a visit. There's plenty of stuff to see, you've got the, uh, the old kirk not just off the cross, and the cross still exists, um, albeit in a slightly different form to what it used to be. Um, you've got the Dean Institute Museum, uh, a lovely park. K Park, with all sorts of interesting bits and bobs in there, and uh, the nearby Dean Castle. And you've also got the simple pleasure of wandering around perhaps unfamiliar streets lined with architecture that is just very interesting. It's varied, and you, you look at it and wonder what it, these buildings were once used for. And it's nice to see that there are, there's some. Uh, some old uh, interesting structure still standing. Um, Kilmarnock made a mistake in the 1970s when it demolished a significant part of the town. Forgive me for a moment, I hadn't realised I'm standing in a road. I don't think I've ever seen a road that looks so unlike a road. Um, <laughs> yeah, Kilmarnock, you know, talking Regent Street, uh, Waterloo Street, Duke Street, and a significant part of the town centre was destroyed in order to make way for the Burns Shopping Mall. What a blunder that was. And as I said earlier, other towns have made similar mistakes. Greenock, Irvine, Dumbarton even. Um, and most of these late 20th century shopping centres or malls um, have not withstood or stood up to the test of time. They're, they're fallen apart at the seams and have become concrete eyesores that are invariably leaking water. Um, it's hard to know what the idea was in the 70s when they decided to build all these things. You know, at that, at that time, Scotland's main industries were just suffering a, a major decline. And it's tempting to say as a result of that there was a lot of unemployment, but in actual fact in the 1970s uh, employment was actually quite high. Perhaps people saw uh, the um, increase in, in inflation that was just about to come and the perhaps resultant increase in unemployment that would follow in the early 1980s, I don't know. I, my gut feeling is that they built all these shopping centres because they felt it was just a, a way of bringing towns into the modern age, the, a new era of perhaps hoped for prosperity. Oh, how wrong they were. I'm Eddie Burns. Take care.